Hello, I'm going to talk to you real quick about two common problems of shoulder rests. And this is a follow-up from my video, How to Adjust a Coon Shoulder Rest. Coons are my favorite kind, and I've just, I feel like I've got the adjustment down to a science. But there are still problems. The coon doesn't work for everybody, but it's a good place to start because it works for a lot of people. The people it tends not to work for are people with really short necks or really square, broad shoulders. That's not a rule, but it that's kind of the pattern I've spotted. But this video, it doesn't matter whether you're using a coon or a different shoulder rest. This is going to address the problem that occurs when your violin, you can't seem to get it up high so that it's horizontal with the ground. I call it the drooping scroll problem. And I'll talk about that. I'll also talk about the other common problem, which is slippage. It where it just sort of slips to the left. That's the easy one to correct, so let me talk about that first. If your shoulder rest is adjusted properly, you shouldn't get the slippage for the most part. So make sure that the, the groove of the shoulder rest sits on your shoulder and that this little part right here hooks over and holds on. And some shoulder rests have really good hooks, like the Bon Musica has a hook that goes right over your shoulder and you can bend it however you want it. That's the Bon Musica. Um, but enough about hooks. So make sure your hook is working for you and that your shoulder is in the groove so that the shoulder rest can seat properly. Make sure that the swivel function, if you have a swivel, make sure it's swiveled that direction, like this, not, not like that. This will cause it to sit on your shoulder very well. And then you have to use the weight of your head, the relaxed weight of your head. You've got to get this to the proper height so that you don't have to scrunch and so that you're not being stretched beyond what your natural neck length is. You should just be able to drop just a little. Okay, and the grippy, the grippiness of the coon is pretty grippy. That's pretty sticky. But if that's not enough, <clears throat> you can put a scrunchy hair tie, women's, you know, those women's ponytail scrunchies, and get the fluffy kind that are scrunchy and tie it around here and that'll give a really good grip to prevent slippage there. And you can also put added a scrunchy or a rubber band or even Velcro, although that'll ruin your clothes. I've seen some people who put Velcro there um, and that prevents slippage off your shoulder. So both of those anchor points, here's an anchor point here and an anchor point here, and they want to twist, which causes slippage. And if you can get those two points anchored, you're, you're not going to have slippage. I'll just show you how I had to rig up my Mach 1 because there's rubber bands <laughs> and a piece of cork because this is slippery wood, it has no grip, but that little grippiness from the rubber and the cork is all I needed to anchor my shoulder rest. Okay, let's talk about the other problem. And I think it's the harder one to fix, but if you understand a couple concepts, you can fix it. First of all, it's hugely important that you have the right chin rest. That's a topic for a whole nother video, but the chin rest has to have 
the right shape for your jaw, has to be the right height and the right placement. They have shoulder rests that sit here, shoulder rests that sit over the middle. I tried out probably 50 before I found this one. It's a Stuber. I love it because it has that little exit place for my jaw. That's right where my jawbone wants to come out. And so I don't get the violin hickey. Sometimes I want one because I want to have that red badge of honor, but better not to have the pain. This is called a Stuber, but experiment. And then there's a new product out called the Impressionist. And it's a, it's a squishy, moldable silicone, something that you mold to your jaw. You stick it on your chin rest and then you mold it to your jaw. And it takes, it really customizes your chin rest. And that's, I think, the impressionist.com. I don't know, but if you Google impressionist, you'll find it and they're only like $15. Okay. Now, <clears throat> on to the drooping scroll. First thing you gotta understand is the table versus the wall concept. Is your violin on a table or is it on a wall? Here's my table. Okay. So if I want to lift my violin up, I put a little pressure here and it suspends the violin pretty easy. Okay, that's on a table. Now, if I put it on a wall, there, and I want to suspend it, holy cow, I don't even dare let go. My shoulder rest is coming off. I have to press way hard. So the concept is you want to, your violin to be on a table as much as you can because if it's on a wall, you're gonna have to press down like to the magnitude of 10 just to keep it where it's at. And that's gonna give you soreness in jaw pain and neck pain, okay? So get it up on the table as much as you can and less on the wall. I know some people have to play on their chest and those people tend to support with their left hand more and that's okay you everyone can find their own way to do it I'm just telling you my thoughts and observations <clears throat> okay so that's the table versus the wall and the second concept I want to teach you is the teeter-totter concept okay if this ruler is a teeter-totter obviously we want our fulcrum to be somewhere in the middle. That's a, a good teeter-totter. That's one that's going to work. Okay, if you see a teeter-totter with the fulcrum clear out here, you, it's not going to be a good teeter-totter. It's out of balance. I mean, that takes a lot of weight to lift this end of the teeter-totter. Pretty simple concept. Well, guess what kind of teeter-totter <laughs> we have on the violin yeah it's a very out of balance teeter-totter and it's but if, if you'll do this try this on your own table and just put your thumb on over the tailpiece and lift be careful because it could slam down it really doesn't take that much effort to lift this up does it You could do this for an hour and not feel tired. So it's kind of in our, all in our mind as far as the balance issue. But for that little bit of balance that is required, your relaxed head weight 
is all you need. That's all you need to suspend your teeter-totter, okay? And keep make sure that your fulcrum, your shoulder rest, is anchored and that it's um, seated really well on your shoulder and play around with the fulcrum. Play around with that and see if you can find a really good balance place that takes very little weight, okay? And then of course, if you turn your head a little bit, not a lot, but a little, and then let your head rest. Shouldn't be a lot. Literally, I'm like this, and this is normal. Okay. It's even less with my other violin. This is my fiddle, and I don't like this chin rest because I can't relax as much with it. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Table versus wall and the fulcrum, and it's really an illusion. It's not that much weight. You're not holding that much weight up, but it is out of balance, and that's where this is critical. And also learning to hook the chin rest on your jaw. And that's why I like my Stuber chin rest because I can hook on, but it doesn't gouge my chin, my jaw. All right, so there's some visual concepts for you. The rest is up to you to experiment, but remember there's two parts to this. The shoulder rest and getting it adjusted right and adding extra anchors if needed, <clears throat> and two, your chin rest. They're equal partners. I, if I had to start with one, I'd start with the shoulder rest. That gets you in the right zip code. Then you gotta find the right address. <laughs> and that's from trying out uh, chin rests. Okay, good luck and I'll see you in the next video.